we are going to compare between perfect competition and monopolistic competition. Before starting to the main topic, let's see each market's definition. In perfect competition market, it describes a market in which many buyers and sellers trading identical products, so that each buyer and seller is price taker. For example, in traditional market, as we can see from the picture, every seller are selling similar products such as fruits and vegetables. Unlike perfect competition, monopolistic competition market in which many firms sell products that are similar but not identical. This type of market situation is applied in our real life. For example, burgers in McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, and Carl's Jr. For the first comparison, in perfect competition, the existence of many buyers and sellers again leads to an important outcome. When there is a large number of buyers and sellers, each individual buyer or seller is so small relative to the entire market that he or she doesn't have any power to influence the price of product under consideration. Given this price, the supplier determines how much to produce and sell. The quantity he or she decides to produce is the quantity that maximizes profit for the firm. The total productions of all firms in the industry determines the market supply of the product under consideration. Thus, while an individual buyer or seller is a price taker, the collective decisions affect the market price. While a firm under monopolistic competition has some control over the price it charges, the firm differentiates its products from those of others. However, this price-making power of a monopolistically competitive firm is rather small. An important consequence of the price-making power of a monopolistically competitive firm is that when such a firm reduces price, it can attract customers buying other brand of the product and vice versa. The next comparison is about barriers to entry. Actually, monopolistic competition and perfect competition have similar characteristics of barriers to entry, which is free to entry and free to exit. It means they can easily enter and exit the market. But there are also some differences between both of them like in the startup cost when firms entering the market and loss risk when firms exit from the market. Take McDonald's as an example of monopolistic competition firm and traditional market as an example of perfect competition. McDonald's, before they start up the business, they need a lot of capital. For instance, McDonald's needs to buy the franchise license, to buy or rent place, or even for advertisement. Compared with traditional market, it only needs a small amount of capital just for buy the stall or rent the place to open the shop. They don't need any advertisement or any franchise license. That's why it's easier to enter the perfect competition market rather than enter the monopolistic competition market. Besides, let's say the worst thing happened to both of them and caused them go bankruptcy. Monopolistic firms will suffer a high loss because they start with a high cost. On the other hand, perfect competition firms that start with a low capital will only lose a small amount of money. Next session is the comparison of perfect competition and monopolistic competition market structures based on growth. This comparison is about the excess capacity. Excess capacity is the difference between a firm's profit maximizing quantity and the quantity that minimizes average cost. First of all, for your additional information, for a firm to maximize its profit, it must produce at the output where marginal costs intercept with marginal revenue. As for a firm, to minimize its average cost, it must produce where the output is exactly at the point where average total cost is at the lowest point. For a monopolistic competition market structure, because of the variety of the products and some of the firm are actually still having a little market power, the demand curve is a downward sloping curve. And now, as we can see from the graph A, 
At point A1, the firm can maximize its profit. While at point A2, the firm produces at the lowest average cost, which is the firm's most efficient production. The gap between the output of A1 and A2 is the one we call an excess capacity. For a perfect competition market structure, because of the homogeneous product, the demand curve is a horizontal curve. And thus, with one price standard, the marginal revenue curve is exactly the same as the demand curve. Now, let's see from the graph B, the point where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, which is the profit maximization point, and the point where average total cost is at its lowest point is located at the same point of output. In other words, in this point, the firm could produce efficiently with a maximum profit gain. And without any gap between these two points, we can take conclusion that at perfect competition market, there is no excess capacity.